What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here with an interesting video topic. Crash Bandicoot 4 gave us a bunch of new playable characters. There's Cortex with his puzzle platforming, Tana with her action platforming, and Dingo Dial with his, um, I'll just call it Luigi's Mansion platforming. So it got me thinking, if Crash Bandicoot were to continue this new feature in the future, who else could they bring to the table in Crash Bandicoot 5? Now I don't want the game to become bloated, the game should still focus mainly on Crash's core platforming, so perhaps only three other playable characters at a time. Just like Crash 4. Seems like a good limit. But with that said, I've come up with five ideas for playable characters that could show up in the future, so let's see if they use any. I'll go ahead and get this first idea out of the way since it's one I've mentioned in a previous video. Crunch Bandicoot. Now, Crash 4 does an excellent job building up the original trilogy's formula, and even gives some references and fan service to people who joined in after the Naughty Dog era of games. For example, some people say Tana's gameplay, we'll get to her later, feels a lot like Nina Cortex from Crash Twin Sanity. So I figured whenever they reintroduce Crunch Bandicoot in the series, he could be used as a love letter for another audience in the Crash Bandicoot franchise, the Crash of the Titans fans, because yes, they do exist. With Crunch's gigantic muscles, he'd be excellent for beat-em-up style platforming gameplay, and with his robot hand, he could hack into giant mechanical enemies and control them, as a reskin of the Jacking Titans mechanic. A little something extra they could add is a hacking minigame. Since Crunch has a robot arm to hack into things, perhaps there could be some moments and levels where he needs to get into a computer system, or open a door, and complete little circuit minigames like in Spider-Man to open them. Number two is Nina Cortex. Now, Tana's gameplay was very interesting in Crash Bandicoot 4, but it didn't really bring much new to the table. It was pretty much exactly like Nina's gameplay in Crash Twin Sanity, except with an added body slam. But I feel like Nina Cortex herself has some untapped potential that Tana can't quite reach. And that's all thanks to Nina's two robotic metal hands compared to Tana's one grappling hook. With Nina's two hands, she could swing across gaps like Spider-Man. She could also use their super strength to push and pull gigantic objects. And of course, she could just punch through metal crates like she could in Twin Sanity. No body slam needed. I also like Nina's twirl a lot more than Tana's kick. Now don't get me wrong, Tana's kick looks super cool, but it stops all momentum entirely while the twirl carries it and keeps going. Then finally there's Nina's weight compared to Tana, thanks to her metallic hands. Nina is able to slam down on chimneys and cause them to break apart, so I'm sure there's some interesting weight-based puzzles they could plan out with her. Overall, I just feel like Nina would be able to enhance Tana's gameplay way more than Tana herself ever could. So I'd love to see Nina playable again in another Crash game. Number three is a playable embryo as he helps the bandicoots again, and his gameplay is something entirely new. I was inspired by the cutscene where he just creeps around the corner and spooks Lonnie Loli from behind. That's right, I'm thinking of stealth gameplay, but with a twist. Since Brio will be helping the bandicoots again, his levels will involve him infiltrating one of Cortex's many labs, slithering around enemies and staying out of sight. But at certain points, there will be puzzles too that involve Embryo's slime potion. For example, let's say two buttons need to be stood on to open a door. Brio himself could stand on one button, and he could throw out his slime potion and have it slither onto the other button to unlock it. Or, if Brio needs a key to open a door, he could send his slime potion to slither through a maze of air vents until it eventually finds the hidden key. Stealth gameplay with a few puzzle mechanics thrown in. But here's the big twist though. At the end of each level for Embryo, he's inevitably going to get caught or spotted by Cortex's henchmen. So you need to go into your Hulk mode and smash out of the place you snuck into in a time limit before reinforcements are called. If you've ever played Wario Land 4, think of that whole hurry up mechanic. Now we get to number 4, and I think they should make another classic Crash Boss playable. They did an excellent job with Dingo Dial, who's a fan favorite, and fleshed him out real good in Crash 4. So now I think it's time for Pinstripe. While he wouldn't 100% be able to capture Dingo Dial's gameplay with the vacuuming and stuff, I do think he would be a good projectile-based substitute. He could of course hit enemies from a long distance, and he could replicate Dingo Dial's hover by shooting downwards with his Tommy gun and using the recoil to float. He's a cartoon character, it could work. Plus, they could give him a really fun cover system. I could also just see really fun segments of levels where there are areas filled with way too much enemies. So you go off to the side, climb up a tower, and snipe enemies from the top. They let Pinstripe keep his Tommy gun in the Insane Trilogy, and Crash 4 aimed a bit higher on the maturity scale, 
so hopefully Pinstripe having a Tommy Gun here wouldn't be too much of a problem. Besides, if they needed any other Crash Boss to randomly drop a curse word out of nowhere aside from Dingo Dial, Pinstripe would absolutely be the next one to do it. You know this to be true. And fifth and finally, we have Nitrous Oxide with the vehicle levels. They brought back the jet board and polar from Crash 2, so I could see them re-implementing more mechanics that were introduced later on in future games. Perhaps in the plot, our Bandicoot heroes don't have the means to teleport or go through portals to get where they need to go. So if they need to travel a long distance super fast, they could call up Oxide and hitch a ride in one of his super advanced vehicles. They wouldn't be copies of Crash Bandicoot 3's vehicle levels though. No extra objectives like come first in the race or shoot down all of the blimps. Just get to the end of the level with automatic on-rails gameplay. Swerve left and right to avoid obstacles, perhaps shoot stuff that's in your way. Just really cool things like that, not much else to say. But there you have it, our fifth character. And that makes five playable character ideas that we could potentially see in future Crash Bandicoot games. In the comment section below, let me know if you liked my ideas, what you think of them, or if you have any of your own ideas, and I'll see you guys next time. Leopold the Brave, out.